Warning, the following contains explicit language and subject matter that may not be suitable for younger listeners, church folk, and people who enjoy kale smoothies. I'm enjoying my motherfucking life. That's all I'm saying. I advise you to do the same. Do shit that make you happy. Go out and get you some white friends. Get you some white motherfucking friends. You ain't got to sleep with them, but you going to need them motherfuckers. If you go to jail and call your friends, these motherfuckers will interrogate you more than the goddamn police did. They had your ass on the phone. Where the fuck was you at? What the fuck was you doing? Why the fuck you ain't called me? Not your white friends. Them motherfuckers will be there by the time you hang up the phone and they'll be madder than you. Just what the fuck did he do? <laughs> murder, murdered who? Look, I fucking known him for two weeks. He wouldn't fucking do something like that. <laughs> Gotta love white people. I don't give a fuck what you say. White people are friendly. You can call them motherfuckers up at three o'clock in the morning with the wrong number and they won't even be mad at you. They just, hello? No, I'm sorry, no Shaquita here. Well, what number did you dial? No, it's a nine, not a seven. We'll try it. If it doesn't work, call me back. We'll figure this thing out. We'll... tips on what's appropriate like just think of it this way don't say anything to a woman that you wouldn't want said to you while you were in jail <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one yeah i think that's a pretty pretty good rule of thumb yeah i've thought of that <laughs> <laughs> all right let's do it welcome back to a pot amongst men i'm your host steve b i'm here my returning guest and good friend mike e hey what's going on everybody you guys might recommend Remember, I recommend what the fuck am I talking about? You might remember Mike from episode 11 or 13? 11. 11? I believe it was 11. It was 11. We recorded from his house. This time we're doing it from my house. Yes. Got Welcome me in back, the suburbs. Buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, you're not that far anymore, man. No, I moved down here. <laughs> see? You see? You, I, you, you knew it was up. <laughs> yeah. I had to. I, had, I needed a change of scenery. And um, to say the least, I'm not, 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 not regretting it at all. Like, I actually, I actually love the move. Um, best, one of the best decisions I made this year. <laughs> good man, I'm happy for. It. I'm happy to hear that. Thanks, bro. Yeah, you know, that's a good thing. So, why don't you tell them where you're from, where you moved from? I'm um, from New Jersey City, born and raised. Yeah, like you know, Hudson County kids, Jersey City. We don't know anything but Jersey City. If you know any anybody from Jersey, will tell you like outside of Jersey City. If you talk to somebody from Jersey City. I don't care where you're from. We don't know of it. <laughs> <laughs> I, you think that's just Jersey City? You think that's every city? Like any um, city kid? I don't know. Because uh, I think, like, New York City kids, like, they know about, like, upstate New York. Like, you know what I mean? They know about it. Like, it's weird how Jersey City is, like, we're kind of, like, in a bubble. Yeah? You know what I mean? It's compared to, like, other places. Like, we know, of course, we know, like, the other cities, like, mm-hmm. New York. Patterson and stuff like that or things in proximity but you go past that like I mean I never heard of Oak- Oakland until like seven years ago never heard <laughs> a lot of the places that when I got in the union that's the first time I ever heard of these towns it'd be like oh I live in I'm like alright what the fuck does that mean to me <laughs> Just, <laughs> for anybody listening there's an Oakland in New Jersey yeah there really talking is about Cali. Oakland <laughs> yeah it's an Oakland in Jersey <laughs> apparently it's a mountain <laughs> like how <laughs> He was at Oakland. Yeah, it sounds like a tough town, man. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> yeah, no, it really ain't. No offense to anybody listeners in Oakland, if you're, if you exist. But <laughs> so, tell me about Jersey City, because I mean, I only know Jersey City pretty much from work, and like that's just like Newport area. Like, I've, All right. I've been that's around, not Jersey City. Yeah, that's not. <laughs> like, I've been around Duncan Ave for a minute, like, right? But just for work, All right? You know, but in Jersey City, I found is deceivingly big. It is. It is. It's very big. It's like in um, different neighborhoods there. And for the most part, like pretty much like where we were working, like downtown and mm-hmm. all that. Well, you were working on Duncan. I used to be Duncan Projects. Uh, that's where I was working. They, yeah. they tore it down. Yeah, they tore Duncan Projects down. They actually recently tore down the projects that I lived in, that I was born in. And that was um, Montgomery Projects. That was okay. on Montgomery Street. 
Curry Woods, Curry's Woods, like they tore that was another project they tore down. But that would be other than like how can I put it? It was it was segregated, like you had your little your little your little sections, like you had a little little area like by Montgomery, like they had like this little little village, little town, like where like it seemed like all the Filipinos lived at. And um like down by West Side when I was coming up, it was like a lot of whites. They had country villages like all whites. <laughs> <laughs> they chased us out of there every time we came in there. We weren't we were only going in there to steal bikes and stuff though, so it was probably <laughs> for the best <laughs> that they kicked us out. But um <laughs> I was a bad kid. I was like, a, but um, nobody's perfect, buddy. Yeah, but so and, it's like segregated in the sense that most cities were back in our day, like in the the eighties and shit. Yeah, it's well, like that's it's just like different, 80s. yeah, different neighborhoods, right? You know, and now it was more integrated. You know, back then it was like you, if you were a certain, if you were like black, you lived like like Montgomery or the projects, or you lived like on the hill. Okay, like a lot of Spanish people lived in the Heights. That was like their era Spanish. I feel like every per, every Hispanic person I know from Jersey City. So I live up, at, you know, by the Heights. Yeah, they, you know, that was like a big Spanish. You know, a funny thing about it, like, you know, a lot of, and then it was, it, like I said, it wasn't really, like, we didn't really hang around each other, like when we, like, I guess that was just part of of the eighties, like we were just coming out of the seventies, and I feel like it was it was long before that. Right, that used to you know that was always a thing. Like yeah, you know, I hung out with my people. You hung out with your people. You know, All right. If I know you, I might say hello, but that's as far as it goes. Yeah, and it was that's always it was for everybody. Exactly. You know? Like my dad is from Newark, uh-huh. and he said it was the same way. Like you know, everybody had like their neighborhood and everything, but it it's weird because now I don't know if this is just looking back at history through like rose colored glasses, thinking you know it was better than it was but it seemed like the way i've always heard it described is it was almost less tension between groups because it was kind of like everybody had their own thing you know it wasn't mm-hmm. everybody trying to i don't know see i don't agree with that because uh that's yeah that's what i want to know is i that, you know what i mean like you at the times like when we, we were young and we would be going around it was dangerous like for certain like you you, you go in the wrong neighborhood like you go in the wrong section like you go in the Italian section, you 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 pretty much get chased. You get chased with bats and stuff like you know what I mean, yeah. or like what the Irish were like. You get chased like you know what I mean. When we were younger, like when it was, but as it got along, like we got older, it seemed like more people started moving in certain areas, and like it just started. A lot of people moved out. Like a lot of a lot of whites moved out. They got out of there like. Like the block, like where you see where I was at, um, on Gifford, mm-hmm. that was back in the day. That was like a predominantly white block, and um, I think my grandfather actually was like the first black person to move around there. No oh, shit. Yeah, and now it's like all like at one point, like in the eighties, early nineties, like all blacks, like Americans, and then this like Dominicans and Spanish came in, and then like now it's like. Muslims and Africans, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> you know, is is like is is like I guess like a change in. That was like around the time when a lot of white white people moved to the suburbs, right? Like they all worked in the city and would just commute every day, right? So yeah, that makes sense. But I'm, it's weird because, even growing up in the suburbs, like you think that like you watch TV and you you see all these different faces, but then you as you get older you realize like it is kind of a bubble. You know, because you're really only around other people like you. Like, yeah. you know, it's not like it's not like there's no you know black families that live in Somerville, but at the, when you really look around, it's a very clear ratio in one way. You know right. what I mean? But it's I don't know. Like, so my thing is that I grew up. You know, thinking like Michael Jordan was at the top of his game. Like, right. you know, rap was becoming like a huge thing. I was in kindergarten. MC Hammer was fucking the hottest shit out. Yeah. <laughs> But a lot of people won't admit it, but MC Hammer was. Yo, if you don't admit it, you fucking you yeah, just, you're lying. <laughs> you don't have you don't have to like it, but you have right. to you have to admit the dude right. was he was huge. Possibly the biggest. That was I, the biggest. That yeah. was one of the biggest falls from Grace too. Right. Poor guy lost everything, almost everything. But dirty dirty accountants, buddy. Yeah. But uh, 
but yeah, my point is that like I grew up, you know, seeing a lot of different color faces on the TV, and I it wasn't until I got older that I realized that there was people that didn't like that. That wasn't normal to other people. You know what I mean? Like you start to experience. I think, well, it's, you start to experience racism in a way where it's, it's there's soft racism and then there's the full on racism. Right. You know what I mean? It's like the people like this is you know we're in our group. You don't you don't mix like that's fine. You want to watch TV? You like the music? That's fine. But we stick with our own. And that was hard for me as a kid growing up. Yeah. Because before I moved here, I, mean, I lived here since I was in first grade. But okay. before that, I lived down in South Jersey. You know where uh, you ever heard of Lindenwald? It's down by Camden. I'm from Jersey City. Yeah. Bro. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember. <laughs> yeah. Heard of Camden before. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, see, I was close to Camden. But my my first best friend in kindergarten that I ever had was black. Oh. Uh-huh. So that just seemed normal to me. And then you come up here and realize, well, there's really not a lot of black folks up here. Uh huh. And you didn't. I didn't put the pieces together until I got older. Right. You know. See with me, um. I know it's like kids like from the suburbs had that that issue, and the city is not really like that because mm-hmm. you you you're so it's so densely populated that you do get to see other races now. Whether you hang out with them, that probably come later on in life, but um, or just because of the times, like because now like my son he has all, all different color, you know, all his friends are like is multicultural, like his his friend his friend base. And with me, it was coming up, I'll say, all the way up to, like, I think my first friend that was, like, even of a different, like, race was, um, I think I was, like, 12. Oh, wow. And, um, he, um, not that I didn't go to school with some, but, you know, it was, like. Your first actual friend. friend. Yeah, like, you know, somebody went over his house and he was biracial. Okay. So, you know, but I got to see his pops, you know, his pops was white, his mom's was black. And it was, it wasn't that it was weird. Like, I was always, I, I never, I don't think I was, ever had an issue with, like, with different races. Like, I, I always thought, like, people were people. Mm-hmm. So, like, nobody had to teach me that. Like, I just, I didn't see the need. Like, you know, I had, I've been around, you know, they're black racists. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, believe it or not. Like, you, you, they, you, come in, they come in all colors. Yeah, you know, I've, um. It's crazy, like, my um, my step-grandmother, like, she used to tell me when I was younger, like, because, you know, my mom's moved down south, and I, I kind of stayed with my grandfather, like, around 15, and she used to tell me, like, you better not ever walk in this house with a white woman. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> so, so, you know what I mean? So it was just, um, and it wasn't like I didn't find him attractive or anything, but I just didn't want to have that issue. Yeah. And so, you know, I was, for a long time, I was like, oh, I wouldn't date a white woman. Mm -hmm. I'll probably mess around with one, but I wouldn't date one. You know what I mean? And as I got older, then it was like, this is fucking stupid. Yeah, why uh, why are we doing this? Yeah, you know what I mean? It's like, if I want to date somebody, if they make me happy, I'm going to date them. Like, I have nothing against that. I I had the same thing. Like, you know, certain people, they tell you, like, this. there's an old saying. It's like, the sun rises in the east. And sets in the West. Never the two shall meet. That's uh-huh. like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's like an old soft form of saying, like, don't mix. Yeah. But, like, I found that, like, you know, when you want to, I might have wanted to date someone of another race. Somebody put the kibosh on it. And then, you know, here I am looking stupid. Like, you know, why? Yeah. Why and not? That, person, that probably, you know what I mean? Could have been the best person for you. And then rather, you, I've seen, it's funny, like, like, my son's mother, like, when I first met her, like, they were, like, straight from Dominican Republic. And, um, like, they, you know, they they, they were not feeling her, like, dealing with me. And it's a funny thing. Like, my grandfather's Dominican. <laughs> you know, but I didn't even know, like, at first. Like, we, it was just something that we didn't talk, to, talk about. Like, I thought my grandfather was West Indian. <laughs> I, I didn't know. Like, you know what I mean? He didn't grow up in DR, so... He kind of grew up like in Aruba and all that stuff, so he had like a West yeah, Indian accent, and you know what I mean. Like he had West Indian ways, but he was born in Dominican Republic. He was Dominican. He just moved, you know what I mean, bro. I something I just found out recently, like in Hispanic, in like the the island Hispanic countries, like you know, DR, Puerto Rico, Cuba, and all. This, 
I always was told like, no, they're not racist down there. Like they don't they don't play that shit, <laughs> okay. bro. That <laughs> shit is a fucking lie. Yeah. Like there is just as many racists down there as there are up here. Yeah, probably. And I, that blew my mind. Yeah, it is. I, I found out firsthand, mm-hmm. and I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, they they you know what I mean they didn't want to date me, and they it was crazy, and they were like, oh, you know, you have a kid by him, like all the stereotypes. Mm-hmm. He gonna leave. He not gonna be there. I wound up being there for not only my son, but other kids and her family. Mm-hmm. And now they love me to death. It was like, you know what I mean? But it, before that, they couldn't stand me. They, I had to deal with that. But, I mean, I didn't care. Like, I was, you know, I'm like, I'm not dating your family. I'm dating you. Yeah. She didn't care, so it just, it, well, was, that, it was what it was. You that's know good I mean? that she stuck by you even with all that bullshit. And right. then you ended up proving them wrong. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's, it's a nice feeling, but it sucks to have to go through it. Yeah, and it wasn't even about proving them wrong. I just yeah, it's just it's just being being a father. Like you know, what I mean, I had a kid. I'm gonna be a father, and that's just you know, that's just me as a person. Like I didn't you know, if I seen somebody in a family like they didn't have anybody around. Like you know, I have a father, but it wasn't like I grew up around him, so I understood what it was like mm-hmm. to not have somebody there physically. So I wouldn't want any kid to go through that. No, I definitely hear that. That's. It's but, uh, kids. That's we'll save the kid part for another. Because yeah. I have I have a lot to say about that, and I don't want to derail myself. No, no, no. Let's get let's keep to the. <laughs> I do I do want to want to tell you. Uh, we were, we touched on it a second ago, and I kind of brushed by it. I want to I want to be straightforward for anybody listening about it. So I was talking about I wanted to date someone of a different race. Mm-hmm. So this is in regarding my biological father. Okay. Fuck him. So when I lived with him. I was, uh, we lived in PA, right. so we were out about, I don't know, 45 minutes west of Philly, and uh, the school I went to, I could live there for two years, the school I went to, there was this chick in my math class, her name was Janelle, a black girl. She sounded cute. No. She, no, you know what, she was cute, and she was like cool, man, she was super yeah. chill, like we used to talk about Drew Hill all the time, like that was back in that those was days. That was the thing. Yeah. Don't front like y'all don't know who Drew Hill is either. <laughs> Tell me what you want. Have me want to dye my hair blonde and shit. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so this, me and this girl became friends, and I wanted to take her to one of the school dances. All right. So I asked her. She said yes. I was like, all right, awesome. Like, we're good. We're set. So uh, when I got home, I told my dad, I got, you know, I got a date for the dance. He said, who is it? Oh, it's this girl, Janelle. He's like, oh, who, where's she from? I'm like, oh, she's from here. I'm like, I don't know. I think she lives over on, you know, the other side. And he's like, no, no, no. Like, what? Was she Italian? Is she Irish? Like, no, she's black. I said, Ooh. I was like, what do you mean? What? What's the problem? <laughs> nah, nothing, nothing. He didn't say anything. Next day, he pulls me aside, and he says, "Listen, you know, I don't want to do this, but I, I just don't think that's a good idea." Uh. I was like, "Why? Like, wh-? and this is like." This right. is my first realization that that's the idea of racism is not just something that exists, you know, in the South or on TV. Right. Like it's, it could be anywhere. Right. And for it to be that close to home, like right. in, that's my, that hurts. It, it did hurt. And you know, it embarrassed the shit out of me. Yeah. And that right there, it really changed how I looked at things. Cause I think back, I'm, it's, I don't know. I just I didn't get it, and it doesn't make sense to me, and it doesn't make sense now. All right. And it's stuff like that that really makes me. Well, I mean, it makes you. You can't look at a person to be like, all right, you're a sensible person, so you have these bad ideas. But other than that, you're sensible. It you, it affects everything about a about person. the person, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you can't rationalize the the you know what I mean the irrational. It's those type racism itself is irrational. So if you're coming from it from a rational standpoint, like you, you could stay up all night and not figure that out. You never will because mm-hmm. it's not it's not a train of thought that you have. You know what I mean? So it's not like unless somebody tell me like, oh, you know, my mom's got raped by every black guy she ever seen or what past is like, all right, what what? what yeah, this is like your, what's your reasoning? Like, what's your reason? Oh, because you know. Cause they're lazy, like what? 
What, yeah. are, you, what are you talking about? Like, well, it's like, it just, like there's certain people where it's like I'm not saying the racism okay is okay, right. but I understand. Like, oh, you know, these Puerto Rican guys used to kick my ass every day on the way home from school. See now that yeah, I get it. Like, that's obviously not you know you can't blame every Puerto Rican guy for this group of guys, right. but I at least I understand the thought process yeah. there. So, but other, I mean, I don't even think that was the case because. You know, my dad was a guy. He had he had black friends, like my dad. And you, what you know, what am I supposed to do? I'm a high school kid. You know, my father was a martial arts instructor. He owned a dojo. Like that was what he did. All right. So what am I supposed to say? No, fuck you. Yeah. Like you know, I'm just like, what am I gonna do? Yeah. So I, I I'm like, well, I'm not gonna go find another date. I'm just not gonna go then. So yeah, it's, it's crazy. It, it, but it's that like that really hurt me. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and it was I was so ashamed. Like I was embarrassed. I was like, "That's I come from this. Yeah. Like, this is this is my my bloodline." Especially line. when that's your first experience with him. Like you didn't grow up with him putting that in you. Yeah, so I like, mean, dude, that, that's a slap in the face. My dad. We used to drive around. And he used to have a pickup truck when I was in preschool. Mm-hmm. We used to drive around, listen to Thriller. We used to listen to fucking Teddy Pendergrass. Like yeah. how how I'm living in the Blue Notes and shit. Yeah. Like that was what I was raised on. My mom. Used to always listen to Marvin Gaye. She would, All right. you know, she. I used to stole her Earth, Wind, and Fire CD. Like that was, that was kind of like the culture that I grew up with. And now all of a sudden they're telling me, no, 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 that's not for real life. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> Just for entertainment. Yeah, like, <laughs> but that that shit, it it like it hurt my heart, man. Yeah. And is you know it's funny. Like it's almost like when you look at um athletes. Mm-hmm. You know what they work. You know they have these owners that actually paid them good money to play for them. And as long as they're playing on the field or on the court, it's all good. But the minute that they start to voice things, like, you know what I mean, about injustice or discrimination or racism, now they want to shut it down and they want to, you know, shut up and play. Yeah, the whole shut up and dribble shit. Yeah, so it's not as far-fetched as you may think because when it's beneficial, you know what I mean, some people, it's not like they, they love it, they tolerate it, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, because... It's okay when it's on TV and they laughing or, you know what I mean, they they getting a good, it's a good um, entertainment, good entertainment out of it. But when it comes to, like you said, like when it comes home and. Then when now it's real. Yeah. Now it's like, oh, no, we, what are, what's happening here? Yeah. And it definitely changed something to me. Yeah. But after that, I started listening to like fucking Rage Against the Machine and like Public Enemy and shit. Yeah. But just like, I, I never wanted to be anything like that. And I always wanted to set myself apart right? from just, just, you know, people are a person is a person at the end of the day. Right. So, and whatever happened to you in your life, you had bad experience with, you know, with a certain group of people. That's not representative of of the entire group. You know, it was like we were saying, like you can get, if you get your ass kicked by like three Jewish guys every day, now you hate all Jews. Yeah. Like, come on. It's stupid. You know, I mean, like I've, I had, I had my, my experiences with like racism it's even as a kid like i had a um i think at one time with my little brother one time i was with him and something happened with i think his bike broke down in front of this guy's house white guy and this was jerry city like right off of west side and um i think i was like my little brother was probably probably about um i want to say like 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 10 years old and I was probably like what like 14 like 14 at the time so I come over and the guy's like arguing with my um my little brother because he's trying to fix his bike in front of his door and I'm like yo what's up with you like why you fucking with my little brother like he ain't doing nothing to you he just like he ain't bothering you he's like oh he's rolling this fucking nasty dog his dog was racist too (laughs) (laughs) like because the dog kept barking know what i'm saying he's going you know and my little brother he wasn't doing anything he was just trying to fix his bike so he could keep it moving the dog barking he's like oh you upsetting the dog so i'm like yo he he's not yeah i'm not here by choice yeah he's not messing with your dog like it's the problem the guy like like brandished his gun like and it's a grown-ass man and it's like yo like What's up with you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. he had to be every bit of like in his forties or fifties. And like you you know what I mean? So it's like almost like like the Trayvon Martin type stuff, like mm-hmm. whereas these older white men see young black boys as a threat. I've done nothing to you. 
other than try to defend my little brother because you yelling and screaming at him. He's scared. He just trying to fix the chain on his bike. He's trying to hurry up. Your dog going crazy. And what what is that for? Like, yeah. It's yeah. that that old school mentality, man. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's clear that you you definitely see if you look at like the stats of like you know people who associate with the the races like the white supremacist shit. It's very clearly a lot of older generation white men, right? You know, well clearly it's all white men, white yeah. supremacists. But I, I just you know what I find strange is the women that support them because mm-hmm. nine times out of ten, if they're racist, they're also a bigot, and just as much as they hate me, they hate them. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you a story. And I should this um I was right around the time Obama was I think I might have even told you about this when Obama and Hillary were going against each other the first time. And um I was in a bar in um Jersey City, right on Montgomery Street. Um I think it's called the Asta Bar. And I'm literally sitting there drinking with a racist. We're buying each other drinks, everything. And he said some shit that it was. I didn't even get offended because it was so authentic, and it made me see the mindset of who this guy was and the way he of, thought of the way how they think. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And he was like, and I tried to tell everybody, like even like when they try to vote for Hillary, I was like, Hillary would never win, and. When I seen that, and they didn't understand, I was like, yo, I'm going to tell y'all something. This guy sat there in my face, and he literally said, in these words, I would vote for a nigga before I ever vote for a bitch. And I was like, wow. Now, she's white. She's one, you know what I mean? He's, like, he he was dead serious. And a lot of these women, they go to bat for these guys, and... They don't give a fuck about them. Like, you know what I mean? If that's they... Listen, that's... You don't know how fucking true that is. Like, that that's a legit thing. Like... Yeah. I mean... Yeah, I don't want to cut you off, but... It's not just... It's not like, you know, like, oh, I don't like, you know, black people. It's, it's anything that's not me. Right. You know, and a woman is included in that. Exactly. A lot of people don't understand, like, when civil rights happen, women benefited from civil rights also Mm -hmm. like you know what i mean like that was for white women also like you know what i mean that was a part of it it wasn't just about blacks and people of color like but i don't know what happened where a lot of white women tend to forget that or don't want to admit that like you Mm -hmm. know what i mean it's almost the same as like how we talk about these poor people that want to be included with the rich so they act like the rich and they support ideologies for rich people yeah. that don't help them and actually are detrimental to their well-being. Yes, yeah, so you know these guys are looking to take away <laughs> all the benefits you have. Yeah, you know what I mean. And it's the, you ain't one of them, right? And it's it's almost the same. It's like I don't I don't understand that mentality, but um, I I don't I don't get it. I you know what I mean it's something I never understood. Like you know. Like black women, like they like to say that, um, like black men don't support them or they don't, and I think it's weird because I think black men are very supportive of black women. Like you, you will constantly see like on, on um, on the internet like black men promoting like black love or just black men don't cheat. About, yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's yeah. a whole another thing. But <laughs> that's Charlamagne yeah, little Duval. Yeah, but it's um, <laughs> it's like. When you, um, you know, calling them queens and goddesses mm-hmm. and stuff, like, you don't hear, like, for the most part, white men speak of white women in that manner. Like, even, like, on jobs, like, when I'm talking to, um, like, some of the guys that you, you know, like, they can't stand their people, they family. Like, they're like, oh, fuck that bitch. I don't want to go. Like, There's a lot damn. of those guys. Yeah, it's like, damn, like, how you, how you talk about the woman you love like that? Like, well, if I had, you don't love her. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, you know what I mean? Oh, she's good. Oh, she's good. Oh, she, go. oh, she better have my fucking dinner. Like, damn, bro. Like, you serious right now? Like, yeah. even if you joke. Like, I couldn't joke like that. Bro, that that all comes down to how you were raised. Because right. you're going to, eventually, whether you like it or not, you're kind of going to repeat at least parts of it. You're going to repeat 
the way you the dynamic between your parents. Right. You know what I mean? That's like if that's the way your dad treated your mom, there's a real high, real good chance that you're going to treat your wife that way. Yeah. You know, like I've seen, you know, you know those guys, like you're talking about, coming to that fucking wife, like they can't stand her. It's like, well, that sucks for you, man. It sounds like you married a real asshole. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Right. Like, I, I don't, I would never, I could never live a life like that. Right. And some some guys, honestly, some guys are just bitter at everybody. Yeah. You know? Like, I mean, but I it's, sh- it's, it's a weird thing because, like, I never hear, like, like it's rare that you'll hear a black man talk like that. About, That's true. About his wife or his girlfriend or something, like, you know what I mean, for the most part. But, it's, you know, it's kind of strange because black women will always feel like they're the ones that don't, mm-hmm. are not loved or victimized or not protected. And they don't even, like, they don't even see that, like, what we see because, you know, they don't deal mm-hmm. with men the way that we deal with men. And they don't see what men say. Now, I'm not saying all white men are like that because now... You got people exactly. like you, like I know white men that treat their wives better than anybody I ever met. It's like, wow, like that, that is some next level husband shit right there. <laughs> like, but that's what, we're, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> you know what like, I mean? It's not a matter of whether you're white or black. It's right. just a, as a, as a person, you know, because yeah. I've seen, I've seen black guys that they've, they love their wife with every ounce of them, of their yeah. heart. I don't know what the, how to say, but you know what I mean? Like they, right. they're in it. For the long haul, right. in it a hundred percent, and they treat their their wife like you know, like her shit don't stink. Right. So, but I've seen I've seen black guys that that don't do that at all. Yeah. I've seen white guys that do both. You know, it it doesn't matter what color you are. Yeah. Like, and I think that's a that's really one of the things I wanted to talk about a lot today, is just the generalizations that everybody seems to not everybody, but you know that people make about. Other groups, like other stereotypes. races. Yeah, the stereotypes, right. and just you know crossing those boundaries. Like, because there's people like you and I. We have friends from different races. We, you know, we come from totally different backgrounds, but we ended up we work together, right. and next thing you know we became friends. And it, that's all that matters. Yeah, you know, it doesn't matter where you're from, who you know. Right. It just matters if a person's cool. All right, then we're cool. Yeah, and I feel like not enough people do that. And even one of the things is that even people who I think their heart is in the right place, like they. They want to prom- like, you know. They want to. It's all about like identity. Like they want to promote positivity and they want to. They want to help people, but it seems like it's so much about your identity as what group you belong to uh-huh. that you don't realize that you push away anybody who's not a, a whole, member a of whole that different group. demographic. Right? Yeah, I, I I agree with that. Like I like guys that like. It's funny you say that. Like I've been listening to um, Gary V a lot, mm-hmm. bro. He's, I keep every time I talk to somebody, everybody's mentioning Gary V. Gary V. Yeah, uh, he, because he he reminds me a lot of myself, and it's like he has this train of thought. I mean, he's a little older and he's a little further along financially by a long <laughs> shot than I am, but it's just like when you hear things like that and you see people like him, is like it it almost reassures me because it's like wow, there's people out there that actually think like me. And, you know, don't give a fuck, like, if they talk, you know what I mean? You know how I am. I'm, the average person can't really take the way I talk because they think that, you know, I'm too brash or, like, just too... And I could be coming from a very genuine, good place. Well, you have that way about you where you kind of, you're not moved by other people's reactions. Like, you right. you know what you think and you know what you're going to say, and that's just good, the way it's going to be. Like, and right. whatever happens after that, that's that's everybody else's... You know, it's for them to deal with. Right. And a lot of people can't take it. You yeah, know if they I mean? don't know and, you, I can yeah. see. I get it. And it's, 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 it's I, you know me. I mm-hmm. come, you know, I'm always coming from a good place. Like, you know what I mean? I'm not going to say anything that would be detrimental to you. Like, if I'm telling you something, whether how fucked up it might be, it's for your benefit. Like, I'm yeah. not going to. You're saying I, it in good faith. Right. I'm not telling you anything to tear you down. And if if I didn't give a fuck, I wouldn't tell you anything. I'd mm-hmm. just be like, all right, well, fuck that guy. Like, <laughs> well, no, you know that that is true. Like, I've I've heard you say a lot of things. I've never heard you actually talk shit about someone. You know what I mean? You're not right. out to. I've never seen you try to tear anyone down, like you said. Right. I mean, unless you know we're we're both bitching about like the boss or something. Yeah. Like that, which <laughs> which yeah. I think everybody can understand. Right. Fuck that guy. <laughs> like, yeah. Not my new boss. I like Marco. Like shout out to Marco. Uh, Rocco, Rocco. He Rocco actually, too. Rocco's all right. Yeah, yeah. I don't know who Rocco is. <laughs> but he, um, Marco's your boss right now? Are you a pullman? Who? Marco? No, I got him with Elio right now. Oh, okay. But um, 
I um actually speaking of Rocco, I just went to his. He's my foreman right now, and he just invited me to his birthday party, fiftieth. And um, you know, white guy, metal, you know, metal, metal guy, and um, I go up there. He got the live rock band going. <laughs> he live right off the lake. It's up, up, you know, place I never been to. Right, like Hopatco, Glen, yeah. Glen Ridge, or um, I think it's Glen Ridge, or um. I don't know that area. It's up, th- it's up there, but it's up, but he's further down up. the boonies. Yeah, and he's out by a lake, and it's like I'm the only black guy there, and it's just mad love, like, and it's just mm-hmm. everybody's having a good time, and you know, I see other guys I worked with haven't seen in years and stuff, and it was like it was just a beautiful thing, and I was happy I went, man. Yeah, and, you know, and it's like. We don't party like that. Like, you know, blacks, like, we have fun, but this was different. Like, it was, you know what I mean? Had a kid out on the water. He on a floaty. We shooting bottle rockets at him. Like, it's some real jackass shit. Yeah. It's like, this This thing was like a movie. The guys, the guys out in the boonies, like, their idea, because there's not a lot to do in those towns, yeah. their idea of fun usually is a little more extreme than the average. Yeah, thing. and it was, but it was, you know, it was genuine. Like, you could feel like it was genuine love. Mm-hmm. Like, and most people would, would not be open to going you know what i mean like most people where i'm from i'll tell them like yo let's go to my boy house like, hell no you crazy like <laughs> yeah. going, you know, fucking around trying to hang us and shit like <laughs> you said that, you said that to me the first time i invited you over yeah well, i don't know man i'm a jersey city kid i can't be out there <laughs> yeah you know but certain towns i gotta know i gotta like yo what's your town like you know what i mean mm-hmm. like i gotta know like but it don't be like the people i ain't never scared of people i'll be more worried like man i ain't trying to come to your town get pulled over yeah like, bro one time i got pulled over going to the fucking hall just for being black <laughs> like like you know what i mean like oh i ran your plate you know what i mean granted like i had some things going on but i like, <laughs> fuck you run my plate for oh you know that ain't no fucking state law stop lying like you actually you were riding behind me mm-hmm. i wasn't doing anything wrong what reason you had to run my plate other than me being black Literally one block away from the hall, he pulled me over, and I was going to get a job. I'm like, sir, I'm just going to get a job. Like, <laughs> you really gonna hold me up? Like, yeah, trying to like, do the right thing here. Yeah, I ain't here to. Don't worry, I ain't here to rob your grandmas. I ain't. I ain't <laughs> with none of that. I'm. You see the sticker on my bumper? I'm a. I'm a union member. I'm. I'm here. You mentioned when you went out to the 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 party in the lake. You said there was genuine. It seemed like there was just genuine love. Everybody was happy to see. One thing that I I can definitely say, and I say this. You know, from experience, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm being honest with you. Uh-huh. A lot of guys, a lot of maybe suburban, suburban guys, guys, you know, out from little rural towns, guys that are, you know, much more open minded, you know, just open to everyone. All right. When you live in a place where there's not a lot of diversity, it's like the second you see somebody different than you, it's like you welcome them. You're excited to see them. Uh-huh. You know, but I mean, it's all it all comes from a good place. All right. But I feel like some people. It's almost a little overbearing sometimes. Uh-huh. I, cause I've seen, like, we've been places, and it's, uh, it's mostly white people, and then, like, so a black guy comes in, and you say, everybody, oh, yeah, I want to be friends with They, they want to hang out with this guy, and it's like, yeah. you know, let the guy be. But it, it wasn't like that. No. Okay. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't like that. It was like everybody did their thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Nobody, it wasn't that overbearing you know you, yeah you get that with like, like, a lot of people they've been watching tv they want they want their cool black friend yeah it wasn't know? it wasn't like that it just was like that's why i said genuine because yeah. it was you know what i mean you could tell when people bullshit like you know what i mean but it was just like everybody's doing their own thing i'm maneuvering mm-hmm. through the party like anybody else it was it was love like you know what i mean it wasn't it wasn't on no like everybody like you said everybody just trying to Let's have a token black guy hang with us. Yeah, like, yeah, we're the cool guys. Exactly. It wasn't, it wasn't like that. I was hanging with one of my classmates that mm-hmm. was there, and um, you know, and a couple of other guys. Like mostly the people I was hanging around were people that I knew. You know what I mean? But just that it was just a good time, man. Mm-hmm. And you know what I mean? Like in the like, I was like, wow. Like I didn't know what to expect. You know what I mean? But I was like, you know, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go see what it, you know. I gotta open up more because you know i'm open-minded but i don't go you know i don't go like places like this i don't Mm -hmm. i don't do that too often because it's like hesitant yeah like i gotta be careful you know i mean i gotta get the green book (laughs) (laughs) you know what i'm saying you know you call a vigo to come and escort you yeah you know what i mean (laughs) so i um but i that that made me feel like you know what i gotta do stuff like this more often 
and like, cause like even like my cousin, he um he he lives out in Philly, but like he was like down in Alabama or something. He was like at a full blown redneck party. Yeah, so yeah, Philly and Alabama are two very yeah. Different but he places. you know he he like race horses and he got you know he get like he on horses. He like a, a urban cowboy. Like he, <laughs> he really is. Like matter of fact, it's a movie coming out, Urban Cowboy with Idris Elba. It's coming out soon. Is this, this like one. a remake of the, the John Travolta one? No, this is like this is about the black. <laughs> The black guys that actually ride horses on Fletcher Street from Philly is actually right around the corner from my aunt house. Wait, so that's that's a real thing? Yeah. Oh shit, bro! I didn't know that. Yeah, like no, they got horses. Like when I go out there, when I tell you I'm going to Philly, I'm right around the corner from there. Like I'm literally like I walk the stables. You know what I mean? Bro, like, I was born in Philly. I had no idea. Oh no, it's a real thing. Right off, of, right off, of, um, right off of Twenty Six, right around the corner, Fletcher Street. All right. It's a whole whole bunch of like. Low, a whole bunch of stables, <laughs> and that's what they. Ever since he was younger, like he 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 rode horses and stuff. Now he own a he own like six horses now, and he he just that's what he does. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's crazy, but yeah. So they riding horses listening to Old Town Road and shit. I, I don't know if he do. I don't know if he gonna do that, but he, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean. But he said he just he just as city as anybody else. Like you know what I mean? He. He be in the city, but it's just a part of their culture. Mm-hmm. The the horses. It's not the whole Philly. Like the whole Philly's not like that. Yeah, no. Nah. You know what I mean? But it's that's that's it's what, got a section. Yeah, it is. Like <laughs> it made me think when we were talking about Duncan Ave before, where that where the the projects used to be when they tore them down, they built all the low rise stuff there. Mm-hmm. Power did all those. Right. So I was working over there. It was my last job before I topped out. I was still an apprentice. Uh-huh. And you know Ray, foreman for Power. Yeah, 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 but he was the foreman there, so uh-huh. we were working over there. And then about three quarters of the way through the job, there's a they had a thing there where they wanted to hire guys from the city. Mm-hmm. So and because it was like a union job, kind of, it was supposed to be a B job, and right. that, but they let us stay for a little bit. What they did is they ended up we all of a sudden we got like eight guys that you know have no they're not from the union they're Don't just from the city. Yeah. yeah, they have no idea what's going on, and it's all guys from the area. So it's all right. black dudes. So now uh, me and Ray are the only like actual electricians left. So we have all these guys working with us, and I'm the only white guy. Yeah. So I was a little at first. I was like, "All right, I mean, hope everybody's cool." Yeah. And bro, like, like what you described to me about the party, like everything was cool. Like I'm not, I'm, I'm not a boss. I'm an apprentice. Yeah. So, but everybody was super cool. I mean, it's pretty much all older dudes, but you know, it, it's, it's always nice when you meet people that are different. And everybody's cool, and it's love, and it's it's genuine. Because yeah. I feel like it restores your faith in people a right. little bit. It you does. know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's that little bit to keep you going. It's like, all right, yeah, listen, there's bad shit out there, but everything's gonna be cool. Yeah. You know? Oh damn! Shout out to uh to Mike Shaw. He's I still still friends with him on Facebook. He's an older dude. Oh okay. He told me he told me some crazy stories, man. <laughs> I don't know why that name sounds familiar. He's Jersey City guy. He's older. I think I know him. You might know, you know him? I think I do. That's sure. Yeah, I think I know him. Shout out to Mike, man. He was a nice dude. And Frank Bruno. Frank Bruno, too. Those are the only two names I remember because those okay. are the guys I work with mostly. <laughs> <laughs> so, we talked about like a lot of white people moving out of the city, mm-hmm. like, uh, different neighborhoods within the city. Do you feel like, like even nowadays... Do you feel like people still self segregate? Like everybody wants to stick with their own group. Oh, like in course. terms of where people live, of course, yeah. You know, like do you, is is Jersey? Well, now you're not in Jersey City anymore. But before you left, was it still like that? Like, or was it was starting to mesh? Everything was starting. I mean, to- you have you have some people. Well, now you got like this type of gentrification thing going on there now. But um, for the most part, yeah. You know, what I mean, like some people. I mean, it's also like a Jersey City thing. Like, some people just will never leave Jersey City. Yeah. Well, there's a they'll, lot of people that never leave the place that they're Right. That they, they're from. Like, they'll live and die there, and it's like, it's crazy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of sad. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, get out. I ain't telling you to move across the country, but, you know. Go experience something different. Go go see, you know, people, you know, probably never even been to New York. Well, listen, I mean, the sad thing is not everybody has the capability to, to well, get out. Well, they have. They have it. They well, just, yeah. they just, you know, they don't know and they don't care to know. Like they mm-hmm. don't, they don't want anything else because 
nobody's shown them anything else. Yeah, they don't know that there's anything else out there. Right. And as, as crazy as that might sound, like, you know what I mean? That's like even with us. Like, if you haven't seen Indonesia, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> what are you going to, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like you're, er, er, you know. Not a lot of Indonesian yeah. people around here to tell you about right. it. Right. And it's not like you got an urge to go mm-hmm. to Indonesia. Like, it's not like you sitting there like, oh, damn, like, I got to go to Indonesia next week. Like, it's not, <laughs> it's not like that. You know what I mean? I'm going to be honest. There's a lot of places on my list that I want to go see before I die. That wasn't really one of them. But now, just after this conversation, I'm a little curious because I yeah. realize I don't know anything about Indonesia. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but it's, it's just one of those things. Like, you know, it's a lot of places like I didn't think, you know, it took me a long time before I even got on a plane. And, you know, uh, luckily I had a cousin, you know, my cousin, um, shout out to Christopher Perez. He, you know, he started showing me things. Like, he, he showed me different. Like, he started showing me that there was more to life. Cause you know, what I mean, at one point, like I was in that that little cycle, like where you just stuck, like this, what it is, this life, this, mm-hmm. you know, this the hood, you know, living for the hood, like. And then, you you know, my son, a lot, a couple of things happened. My son was born, and that you know, what I mean, that made me chill back, like with the hood shit, like you know, what I mean, like oh, fuck the hood, like I got a kid, like <laughs> funny how fatherhood changes. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? It's like you know. Like my son, my, my son's mother, she said all the time, like yo, she like yo, you changed, you changed a lot when he was born, and you know, kept me out of a lot of trouble when he was born, and um, then my cousin, you know, he he started showing me like the finer, like I guess you could say like finer things, and like he started showing me it was more kind of opening up your your yeah, world a little bit, yeah, you know, and then um, and I became a truck driver, and I got to see the country, and. That, that really, like, when I came back, I was like, yo, that's when I really was like, this world is bigger Mm -hmm. than Jersey City. Like, you know what I mean? Before you knew it, like, I had done went to Canada, uh, went to Mexico, and it's like. It's amazing, right? The first time you you leave the country? And it's like, yo, this is, it was scary at first. Like, uh, you know what I mean? I was scared. Like, I was, I ain't gonna front. I was, like, I was worried. Like, you know what I mean? Like. I was going through the, going through the, you know, going through the customs and all that, and uh, you know, I just, then I'm up in, um, I'm up in Canada, like I'm like, I'm not like in Ontario or like Toronto mm-hmm. and nothing, you know what I mean? I'm in London. This fucking, you, most people don't even know what the fuck that is. I've like, only it, ever heard of it. It's, it's, it's like the boonies, like it's like <laughs> the woods, like you know what I mean. And you're out there, every fucking sign is like in French or whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> I don't know what these signs say, like you know what I mean. You up there, you like, I'm deep in this fucking country, and I don't know, dude. What. It's it's a whole nother experience. It's it's. And it really opened my eyes. When you leave the country and you actually get away from the, the cities and like the tourist yeah. areas, when you're in the country, country, yeah. you know, like I was in France in January, it's my first time, uh-huh. and we had to, we were in Paris, we were, you know, on vacation. We'd saved up. We were going on a nice family vacation, so we were going to go on a drive to go meet my wife's best friend from Cuba. She moved. She lives in Germany now. Oh, okay. and so when she left Cuba, instead of coming here, she went to Germany. Right. She married a German guy, had some kids, and that's, that's where they live. So we were going to meet halfway. So it was like Man, a three-hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, imagine a kid's half Cuban, half German. Yeah, well, that's crazy. They're super nice people. Though. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so we we're going to meet them. It was like a, they live like six hours away from Paris. So we were, all right, we'll drive three hours. You drive three hours. Okay. So we ended up meeting in uh, the city of Verdun. There's a place where there's a famous battle fought in World War One. Uh-huh. Actually, one of the bloodiest battles in human history was fought there. Okay. I didn't realize that until we got there. I'm like, why does his name sound familiar? And I'm like, oh shit! Like I've heard of this. I think I slept through that that uh, part of history class, so I had to I had to do a little reading. Uh huh. So anyway, so we're driving like through France. We're away from the city. Like, yeah. We're in France, France. And I was like, fuck! Like I had to say, like I felt nervous. Yeah. Like I have. No fucking idea where we are. I could look at a map and never find my way yeah. out. Yeah. Like, and it, it's really amazing how much just being away from what you're familiar with right. can just change your perspective, even just a little bit. Yeah. And the first time I left the country, I mean, I'm not counting Puerto Rico because that's that's still part of the U.S. Yeah. Even though they speak Spanish there, like, 
I can go to Union City. They speak Spanish. It's cool. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Fluently. That's all they speak. The sounds are there. (laughs) But uh, the first time I went, my my good friend, he lived, he went to college in Switzerland. He got, he was a smart dude, got into like a really cool school out there and they were having an alumni event. At the time, I was, it was actually, this is 2015. Okay. This is right before we started working at Harborside. All right. So I went out there. Like he's like, oh, bro, I'm gonna go back for an alumni event. Like, why don't you come with me? Like, I'm trying to get you to go on a trip. This is a perfect one. Like, All right. So I saved up a little money. I found a deal on a flight. He's like, oh, you don't have to worry about a hotel. We only need it for two days. The rest of the time, we're gonna stay with my friends that are out there. Okay. Like, okay. <laughs> I'm sold. All right. Let's do it. And I remember as soon as we set down, like we actually landed in Italy. Uh-huh. Because it was all the way in the south, so it was real close to the Italian border. So we landed in Milan, and we had to drive. It was only like an hour north uh-huh. to uh, this place called Lugano in the south of Switzerland. And just like hearing him speak Italian to people, right. and I realized, I'm like, don't nobody give a fuck that I speak English. Like, yeah. I'm officially out of my element. Yeah. But then just seeing how much different everything operates there. It's just, and not necessarily it's better or worse, it's just different. Right. You know? And man, that really changed my perspective. I know every every jerk off they come back from. Oh, I went to Europe. You know, now I, you know, now I eat escargot and now I yeah. do this. Like <laughs> now I drink aquapana. But uh, drink, it really does. It really does. I uh, drink that. I've never been to Tuscany. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, now they sell that here. Uh, I mean, like they did it all the time. You <laughs> remember? You remember the dude that used to run the hoist, Benny, the Italian guy. Benny, he worked for AJD. Benny, 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 that sounds so familiar. Which call Which building are we talking about? Which... He was at. He wasn't at Harbor Side. He was at the, uh, the Columbus that, that buildings we Benny, worked at. Benny sound. He was at Columbus when we were there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that was my boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> like... <laughs> well, I came back. I was showing him the pictures, and he saw like one of the the pictures. We were at a cafe right by the lake, like real gorgeous picture. And I had, there was a bottle of Aquapana on the table. And it, that was what he was here. Ah, Aquapana. Hey. <laughs> and now you could just go buy it at the freaking Target. I mean, you always could, though. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't as readily available. Like, I used to actually go to, um, because I loved it. And it was like, I love, I think it's the best water. I don't care what anybody says. But I used to get it from um, where Acme used to be behind, um, is it Acme now? Is it still Acme? No, it was A&P before. And now it was Acme. Where? Right, was- right off of, um, what's that? Right off of um, Marin. If you go all the way down past the um past the Holland Tunnel, what is Marin? A, Where is the shop right there? It's um no, that's it's it's even further down. It's like on the other side, like going almost into Hoboken. Oh, the A&P. other way. Yeah, there's oh. an A and P there, and um, is that by where the Best Buy was? Yeah, exactly. It's right there. I don't know what it is now. No, it's, it's a it's, shop it's right it's now. It's Acme. Isn't it a shop right it's now? Acme. Is Acme? Acme, no. Uh, I know where you're talking about. Yeah, though. but right there, A and P. I used the to light the, rail runs right over top. Exactly. There. Yeah, okay. And I used to go there all the time and get the um, aquapana, and um, I loved it. I had it at a restaurant one time, and I just like fell in love. And I just found it. It was like the only place in Jersey City that sold it. <laughs> and um, the Acme still do. They still they pretty much kept it like the way the A and P was. Like that A and P was like a little uppity compared to like other A and Ps. I guess because of the area. Mm-hmm. But um yeah like you go you it, it was always it was always around like I was drinking that and people didn't know what the fuck I was drinking they they thought <laughs> yeah. I was like drinking like alcohol or shit. <laughs> but yeah so before we were mentioning like I, I was telling like, how I grew up and like you know like Michael like back in the days when there was there was big stars that were that were of different races uh-huh. were, you know like I always loved I always loved Michael Jackson which I know really doesn't really it's too too weird of a guy to kind of really count him as black. Just well, because. no, he was black. I mean, he was. It is what it is. He was black. Like he was black when he was young. You know yeah, what I mean? But he he still he was black. Yeah. But my my thing is that like nowadays like so a lot of like the podcasts I listen to like I was listening to like Brilliant Idiots it was like Charlemagne uh-huh. and Andrew Schultz, uh-huh. and then from that Char- and do you ever listen to them? No. So <laughs> Charlemagne had a a, a bodyguard. And there's this boy, this guy named Wax. Uh-huh. And he they used to bring him on the Brilliant Idiots all the time. And he's just a funny dude. Uh-huh. But he was so people liked him so much that he he had a has a podcast now with somebody else. Oh, really? This girl who was she used to be a rapper named L'Oreal. 
She's on a. She got a podcast with Angela Yee from the Breakfast Club. I like her. I don't. I don't. I don't even know how she looked, but she just. I don't know. There's just something about her voice. I, I love Angela. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> but it was so. So I listened to that. Like, I don't. I find like a lot of the music I listen to. Like, I still like a lot of like the soul music I grew up with. Mm-hmm. You know, like I like rap. I'm kind of like old. Good music. But my thing is, I find like, and it's not like it's something that I'm conscious of that it's like a, a contrived thing where i'm purposely doing i just like what i like and right. it just so happens that a lot of the artists a lot of the entertainers i like happen to be black uh-huh. and sometimes like i feel a little self-conscious because i feel like people look at that and they think like what are you trying to you trying to be like a, some kind of poser you know what i mean yeah, fuck them but no i, I mean <laughs> definitely fuck them but you can only hear it so many times before you start to internalize it a little bit yeah i mean listen it's not like you out here trying to be somebody that you're not like you don't you don't sit there and try to act like a rapper you mm-hmm. know what i mean you are genuine like you are who you are like you you're not trying to be a cool guy like you you admit that you like superhero movies and you yeah. know like you, you you'll be the first to say you're a nerd oh you know yeah what i mean Bro, so, i was literally watching endgame right before you walked yeah. in i mean like i told you i was watching the aquaman before <laughs> yeah. i came like i mean i just turned it on i ain't really I don't even know why. I had my son. I brought my son over, and I just I put it on more so because I don't know what he. I'm just trying to connect with my kid. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. But um, like I watch, I watch um, you know, I watch things that most people be surprised at. You know, mm-hmm. I love Queen. I love Queen. Like you know what I mean? I think like if you don't like Queen, you just don't like music. I I mean I have to agree, and I I strongly I stand behind that. Like you know what I mean I watch Bohemian Rhapsody. Like I actually wanted to go. I didn't go see it in the movie theaters, mm-hmm. but I actually wanted to go. Like I was like excited when that movie came out. Most people that I grew up with don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about right yeah. now. You know what I mean? Um, but I'm not ashamed of that. Like you know every now and then I blast I blast it. I love classical music. Like if you go in my car right now, there's five CDs in my car. It's a five CD disc changer. I have three of them that are um, Mozart. Mm-hmm. I have one that's Marvin Gaye, and another one that's my boy Jaws, his mixtape, and that's literally all that ever be in, inside of my um, my car at any time. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, you know what I mean? Like I like class, I like some classical music. Some some of I mean the classic rock. Mm-hmm. Some of it, I think they be like, man, y'all, y'all tripping. Like that shit is whack. Well, if you work, but, you work on the job site. They play one, right, four, they, three all day, and it's the same, you know, yeah, fifty songs over yeah, and over. And I was like, yo, y'all don't get enough of that. Yeah, you've been and, hearing it since nineteen seventy two. Right, but that's when I um I learned about Queen on the job. Okay. Because um I think the um song I heard was um well I know about Bohemian Rhapsody, but I wasn't that crazy about the song. It was just like a weird, quirky song back in the yeah. day that came out and. Well, I don't know. Goose. Like, that's the only part I remember. Mamma Mia, Mamma Mia. Yeah, and that was from fucking the Wayne's World shit that yeah, we knew we... that. You know what I mean? But it wasn't like something that we took seriously. And um, I remember the song that hooked me to Queen was um, Killer Queen. Okay. When I heard that song, I was like, yo, <laughs> what the fuck? And I'm like, yo. What song? I'll be asking guys, yo, what's that song that be coming on? They be like, they be like, Queen. And they be like, <laughs> they like, oh, that's Queen. I'm like, what? Queen? Like, that's their name? That shit sound weird as fuck. <laughs> but then, like, you know, I, I started getting interested and I started listening to it. And I'm like, oh, shit. I started hearing all the songs that they made. Like, another one bites the dust. We are the champions. We used to sing that song in football. Mm-hmm. We <laughs> are the champ. Like, I didn't know what the fuck we were singing. Like, you know what I mean? I never heard the song before. I thought it was just a chant. That was made up for football. I didn't know they made that song. Yeah, like, we will rock you. Yeah, like, you know, we used to do that too. Yep. I didn't know they made that song. Like, you know, and then when I found out they had so many songs, and it was crazy. I heard um, Under Pressure. Okay. My um ex. <laughs> my ex-girl tried to put me on a song. She put that shit on. I was like, man, turn that shit off. I'm going to listen to fucking like, Vanilla Ice. Fake-ass Vanilla Ice. I hear this shit. <laughs> Who the fuck these guys think they are singing on Vanilla Ice beat? <laughs> Yeah. I was bugging yo. This shit was crazy. I'm like, yo, I did not. I yo, I so underestimated that shit. Dude, there's and so now, many songs where they sampled like the beat from old songs, and yeah, I didn't realize it. Yeah, yo, like that song, I didn't know. Like, I, she put that shit on. I'm like, man, turn that shit off. I don't want to hear that shit. Like, I'm, <laughs> we was in the car. I'll never forget it, yo. 
And she she played that. She was she was playing it like you know what I mean. And I was like yo, the fuck these white boys think they all playing Vanilla Ice. I don't want to hear Vanilla Ice song. <laughs> fuck wrong with them. It was fucking Queen, and it just so happens that he sampled from them. And that shit was bug like it blew my mind. And ever since then, like if I show you like my playlist, I'll, I'll even show you like on Spotify, I have Queen like mm-hmm. like Dave Greatest Hits is on my playlist. Like I listen to that. I love Marvin Gaye. I love Sam Cooke. Um, it's not really much like other than classical classical music, and like I'm a big Mozart fan. Mm-hmm. I love Mozart. Like I just, it's just something about him. not really that much in the Beethoven. I like a couple of things from him. <laughs> Chopin. You know what I mean? Like it's a couple that I would I tolerate. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> did ever, but did you ever run into a situation where it's like someone like say it was like a white artist or an actor or somebody that you like you thought was cool, and then you find out that they have uh, some some bad ideas. About... Hulk Hogan. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hulk Hogan. Like, you know what I mean? That hurt. Nah, I actually, like, as I, as it went on, I wasn't surprised. Mm-hmm. Like, when he seemed like he was a douchebag, you know, the show, the show kind of, he should have never had a show because it kind of really showed who he was. And you saw too much of him. Yeah. Um, let me think. Uh, well, I, I asked because I... I find the same thing. Like, there's some... Clint Eastwood. Yeah. I, it's one of those <laughs> things where it's like, I don't know why I was surprised at that. Yeah. With him, I was, like, I was surprised that I was surprised, but... Um, yeah, exactly. You know, um, I don't know how true it is, but they say Elvis was. I don't I don't know how true that was. But um, I liked him at a point, but then after a while, like, when I started seeing, like, he basically just exploited black music it was mm-hmm. like you know fuck him too but that's pretty much i can't even say that because that's what was happening mm-hmm. in those times like that's what was going on like a black group would make a song and it'd be good and then they'll just take it from them and they water it, it down to white and give it to a white artist mm-hmm. you know what i mean um i like i find that there's like i, I hear it a lot more in like conversation it's kind of like like some of the things i listen to are definitely like, I, let's put it this way. I'm not the target demographic. You know right. what I mean? And I, I hear the way some people talk about race. And uh, I just feel like, like, really, like. Mel fucking Gibson. Yeah. That was my guy. Like, <laughs> yeah. So he said that pack of niggas. I was like, can we say that on the podcast? I don't know. You can. I can. <laughs> <laughs> you might be You might be the first person to, to, to use that word on the podcast. Oh, oh well, I, if they don't know, I have no filter. I apologize. Well, listen, yeah, I don't. There's no filter on here. It's all right, just, cool. <laughs> it's, it's all rated explicit, whether we curse or not. So yeah, you're, you're safe. But yeah, no, I just feel like sometimes, like you know, when oh there that goes again. That light goes on and off every episode, so you'll hear on every episode. Like I have to stop. Like oh no, it's not. It's haunted. That's cool. You know. Oh, okay, that's cool. They just want to be not, let them know they here. You yeah. want to talk? Yeah. No, <laughs> please you, don't. Actually. If you fucked up later on, you yeah, doing no. it fuck. <laughs> you edit it. I won't <laughs> be able to sell this place fast <laughs> enough, bro. <laughs> I'm not writing that on the contract yeah. on the seller's disclosure. Oh my god! But uh, yeah, I just feel like you know, there's a there's a lot of good people out there, and I think a lot of times we get caught up with what the shitty people are doing, right. and we tend to judge entire groups based off the shittiness of a few people you know what i mean and so it's what we've talked about since the beginning of the episode right it's we don't want to judge an entire group based off the bad actions of a few you know who i was judging it and this just recently happened and i just recently started following them on instagram because of like what i heard about them um or what i saw about them it was actually um stone cold I always thought Stone Cold was like one of those racist piece of shits, mm-hmm. like that just um, like just a racist piece of shit. Uh, I'll be, listen, I'm gonna be honest. This is a very f- unfair stereotype, but I've I've kind of expected the same thing, and but he, I know nothing about him. Just as a and disclaimer, and it's, he's not. He actually got torn into somebody's ass about it because um, they were they they used a picture of him mm-hmm. and was talking about the um the the confederate flag and that old southern heritage and he was like fuck he don't give two shits about what you he, he just went into them like he don't give it i don't give it the stone cold and give two shits about what you think because that way it, it means something different to african-americans and it hurts like 
you know, and basically he was like, to me, you're just a racist piece of shit. And mm-hmm. like, and that's the bottom line. Like he went off. Cause stone cold. Sense yeah. He, he went off. And I was like, yo, isn't, isn't it cool to find out somebody you weren't sure that about shit turns out to be. Dope. And I felt yeah. like an asshole. Cause all those years I really thought like he was like, like he looked like a, like he just, well, listen, bro, that shit. I mean, I know you told, you said it makes you happy. It makes me even happier that a bald white dude, you know, is, yeah. is breaking the stereotype because, mm-hmm. you know, clearly I have to worry about that. Word. Anytime I see like a, um, what they would call a redneck, and I hate to say redneck because, you know, that gets a bad rap too. Mm-hmm. And redneck doesn't necessarily, necessarily mean a racist, you know? Yeah. But they, you know, some, damn, I, don't, I hate to use that word, but rednecks like some rednecks are like the coolest motherfuckers yeah listen they, they use the word themselves it's not yeah like i mean they embrace, unless you yeah, want it to be yeah but i just you know i just felt like it, it's got to be a better term no nah, i know uh, but yeah are, but, you, like, are we talking specifically southern guys or just rural people rural rural okay. like the true back of the woods like you can i mean listen that there's plenty of guys. I'll just say like that, that's pit, a red like, mother, red yeah, ass like, motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like just you know, don't don't like you know what I mean? That that type. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That that guy. You know what I mean? And it's it's cool when you when you hear them because it been it been a stereotype, and I fell into a stereotype because that's mm-hmm. what it is. It's the same as somebody just thinking because I'm from the city and I'm black that I'm just like this no like gang banging no knowledge mm-hmm. having you know what i mean it's crazy cuz even like people uh even where i'm from like females and stuff like when they start to talk to me and they actually see like yeah i'm articulate and you know what i mean and they be like oh wow like i'm like i'm shocked like what you just thought i was dumb as hell like yeah. you know what i mean like i'll just yeah. and is they be like for the most part yeah like we thought you was just some just uh, the average dumb cuz a lot of people oh, and a lot of guys aren't Mm-hmm. A lot of guys where I'm from, they really aren't. They really be acting, and it, it's fucked up. Like you know, what I mean, it's the same as like when you see a girl that she like the blonde that want to act like the bimbo, and you know mm-hmm. she's not a bimbo. It's like yo, shorty, that's not even you. Yeah, like you know what I mean. Like you was fucking like you were head of your class. Like what? Are you, why are you doing that? Like, it's crazy. It's one of those things where it's like the way the the culture within this this society is that. Well, we think because we exist in this area, we have to act a certain way and do a certain thing. Right. But then you kind of take a step back and realize, like, well, if I'm not really like that and you're not really like that, what are the odds most of these other people aren't really like that? Exactly. And we're all just holding up this fake stereotype. Right. Like, well, the only people doing that is us. Right. Like, what if we all just stopped? Yeah. Like, what would that do? Yeah. But some people, like, they're too self-conscious, too. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Some people are. They, like, some people, like, they're genuinely like that. Like, you know what I mean? Now, I can get like that if I need to be. Like, you'll see me around certain people. Like, me and you talk about this all the time. Like, mm-hmm. yo, if I be around my friends and we talking, you probably won't understand the damn word we saying. You know what I mean? But I can I can turn that off. Like, I don't, mm-hmm. you know, I don't need to talk like that all the time. I don't need to be a hood person all the time. Like, I don't even like to be like that. I just mm-hmm. think it's ignorant at times. You know what I mean? I can speak. Why not speak? But I don't want to be like a hundred percent. Like I don't want to have to think about everything I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I just want to talk. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah what I just mean? want to like, be you. I'm not a politician. Like I'm not gonna sit there. I I, w- I would be a terrible politician because I'll just I'll be like Bernie every day. Like I wrote the damn bill. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'd rather spend my energy <laughs> thinking about what I'm gonna say yeah. instead of how I'm gonna say it. Right. Right. Exactly. And I I actually caution when when I see people that. I, I don't trust people that don't curse. Oh, I don't either. I don't trust people you know? that don't curse and don't drink. Right. I don't trust either of those groups. And right. I don't trust people that have never had their heart broken by someone of the opposite. Well, by a, a lover. So a to lover, speak. son. Yeah. I don't trust people that have never done those three things. Right. You I can agree with that. It's like, what, what well, not so much the drinking. I, I could give you a pass when I drink. Some people, it's well, just not their thing. I, could, I, could, I don't trust people that have never even tried. Yeah. I, you I know, if you that. won't at least try it to know you don't like it. Right, I think there's a problem there. Like, if you don't do it because you had a bad experience, I got you. Yeah, you know? I there's no that. problem. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> no cursing. It's like, bro, who are you trying to fool? Like, what do you think this is? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not, the, I'm not the fucking police. Like, you can, you can say whatever you want. Like, it's right. fine. I mean, maybe you're like super religious, in which case I have another set of problems. But 
<laughs> we ain't gonna get into that. Yeah, no, I'm not but gonna get into that. That's I don't just, trust them either. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> listen, I, I have no problem. Like my man Shamor that was on here, he's very religious, and we've had discussions at work about it. And we, I mean, we fall on very different sides, but we can right. still agree. Like a good person is a good person, whether or not we agree on that I shit. Agree. So it's fine as long as you're not out there, you know, touching kids like you know, some of these fucking guys. That's I don't know why I brought that up. Shamor yeah. has Shamor is not like that. Shamor. Shamor is not even a priest, so you don't have to worry about him. Yeah, I mean, shout out to Shamor. So I don't even mean to get get you involved with uh, <laughs> shittiness. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you know what I mean. Like now you're gonna be like, God damn, you're out there. Like, what, yeah, bro, how you? Why, why, why are you talking about? He just called kids? me a boy toucher. Yeah. <laughs> I might have to cut that out. That yeah. wouldn't be fair to him. I mean, we 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 cleaned it up. We said you said that. We tried a little disclaimer. Yeah, it, it wasn't about him. <laughs> I like. I'm talking to his wife, Alexia. I don't know why I said that. Forget it. You know, I'm just, I've been drinking sangria. It's cool. Mm-hmm. You like this? It's a pretty good sangria. Right? Bro, my my boy turned me on to this. They got it at Trader Joe's. And there's yeah. only two Trader Joe's in the state of New Jersey that actually sell booze. Oh. I, had to, I had to drive all the way to friggin' Westfield and to like Yuppieville to get this shit. Know. Is there a Wegmans around here? Yeah, there's one in, in uh, around 202 in Bridgewater. It's, uh, I got to go there. I gotta. I'm. I'm. I'm like a fan. Yeah. <laughs> like all the things I heard of Wegmans, like it just sounds like this awesome place. Like it. It's cool. I mean, like shopping center utopia type thing. I wouldn't buy too much into the hype. Like okay. it, at the end of the day, it's still just a grocery store, right? You know what I mean. The bakery is real good. Uh huh. And the deli is real good. Oh, okay. I gotta they check have, it out. They have pretty good seafood. But I mean. It is just a grocery store. All right. So don't, don't <laughs> let them blow too much smoke. Yeah, ass. you know. I mean, you know, I read the articles. I'm like, damn, this shit. It's like, nice. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's it's a little more expensive, but not too much more. Right. Like if you're just buying. I saw a truck on my way. I think this morning mm-hmm. I seen a Wegmans truck. And I was like, oh, shit. It might be the Wegmans <laughs> yeah. down here. Because I know it ain't one by me. And I'm like. From here, you would have to get on 22 West. Oh, okay. And you go for like two, three minutes. And then it takes you to the you know the heard of the Somerville Circle, no. Well, it's just a few minutes away from here. I just heard of Somerville. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's your first time here. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully the town treated you yeah. treated you well. I didn't get pulled over. That's good enough for me. <laughs> yeah. That's well, all. That's how I judge a town. I hate East Orange, by the way. Fuck East Orange. EOP, EOPD, I hate you guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I never come to your town. You don't have to worry about ever seeing me there ever again. I get pulled over every time I go there. Fuck that. <laughs> luckily, yeah, luckily I don't have to go there too yeah, often. Don't go there. All right. So, one of the last things I want to talk about is: Do you remember? Like, you, you briefly touched on this before. Like, your first friend of a different race, where it made you, like, you, you know, maybe when you were young, like the first time you went over like a friend's house and you uh-huh. realized, like, oh wow, this is nothing like what what it's like in my house. Yeah. And well, it doesn't, you know, whether it doesn't have to be white or, or anything. It could be whatever race. It's something different than what um, you're used to. Yeah, I could say his house definitely. He, um, it was different, you know. Was it a white guy? Yeah. He, well, he was mixed, but, you know, it, okay. it, it, like they live with the father family, so it was like the white the white side. And um, they, I mean, they were in the hood too, so it wasn't like that much of a difference, but it was just just to see different people like you know what i mean yeah it's just like the way they 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 did live a little differently you know what i mean like i can't say like i don't want to say like negative things about it but it's, it was different listen i i trust that you're coming from a, a place of good intentions right so whatever yeah whatever you feel comfortable you know with, what i like, mean it, yeah not just I don't, you know what i mean no i got gotcha. you yeah but it was it wasn't like it wasn't like where where I was, like, when my mother, like, when I was coming up, like, my mother was, like, damn near militant, like, you know what I mean? Because she was a single mother, and mm-hmm. I was basically playing, like, the mother role because she had to work all day. So, <coughs> you know, I had to clean up. I had to cook. I had to, you know what I mean? Everything had to be in order when she got home. And, you know what I mean? It was a little freer. Mm-hmm. Like, at his house, they were, they were like, a little more free. Yeah. and, and that's yeah. It's kind of the stereotype you hear about. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it was, it was different. I didn't, I didn't understand it. Like his other cousin, like he had a cousin. He used to be cursing at his moms and all that shit. I was like, oh, yeah, no, that's like, that's like <laughs> that's like super super white because yeah, Italian yeah, families don't do that. Yeah, I'm like, whoa, I'm like, yo, 
I would. <laughs> Are you fucking nuts? Yeah, I'm like, I would dead. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you, y'all crazy. Like, I got, I gotta go. Like, I don't, <laughs> this, this is nuts. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? You're gonna get me fucked up, dude. Yeah, I gotta get out of here. Fuck you, mom. I did what I want to do. I was like, okay. It's funny. Like, you hear so many like like black comedians. Like, they do like the, the bit. Like, oh, I had my white friend, and he was cursing his mom. And like, but that's real. No, that shit is real. Yeah, as hell. like there's, like, there's kids real. out there that that do that. Yeah, like it's it's the weirdest shit I ever seen. Like you know what I mean? Like when you get older, like when you're an adult and you on your own, if you curse, like you know what I mean? I don't curse at my mother. No, you know what I mean? Like that's still to this day. Yeah, like that's that's crazy. Like I might curse in front of her and stuff, but like sometimes I feel bad about doing that. Yeah, I don't even but, like doing um, that. But I, I just don't, I don't got no filter. Like, I just, yeah. it's the way I talk. So it's like, it just comes out sometimes. But even still, you still try to be respectable. And, you know what I mean? But, like, they were like, you know, fuck you. Like, you know what I mean? And it's like, wow. Then, like, even now, like, you see kids hitting they Like, it been times, like, I see kids hit their mother. And, like, and I be wanting to hit their ass. Like, yeah, yo, I've seen that fuck? just recently. But, um. It's weird. Like, you can't you can't do that now. Like, you know what I mean? Like, back in the day, you could do stuff like that. Yeah, but you, there was, there's a lot more gray area. Yeah. Like, you know, but now, children. you know, now you fuck around and get arrested for mm-hmm. defending a parent. Now, my kid, I'm going to fuck him up. I don't, I don't <laughs> play that shit. Like, I'll tell somebody quick. Like, I don't, we in public, he know. I don't give a fuck where we at. And y'all better not say shit to me about my kid. I don't want to hear none of that. Oh, you shouldn't. You come from the Bernie Mac school, apparently. Yo, listen, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm old school when it comes yeah. to it. You know what I mean? Because I've seen firsthand what kids are like when they're not, when they're just let to do whatever they want and spare the rod. Like, mm-hmm. spare the rod or spoil the child. That is so fucking true. You know, I've seen it firsthand. Like, I've came up with people. They didn't get beat. They got to do whatever the hell they wanted to do. They ain't worth shit now. Mm-hmm. Me, I got my ass kicked. I mean, I'm still here. I didn't die, and I'm, I've seen both. Yeah, you know what I mean. I've never, I never seen like I never seen a, a to to me like where I come. I never had the pleasure of seeing a productive kid like that. Never been mm-hmm. hit. Well, I never seen that. I, you know what I mean. I'm not saying that is it doesn't exist, but yeah, you just never seen it. I've never seen it. No, it gets I mean? it's out there. Yeah. I, it's it, even for me like it's a little it's it still surprises me when I do find it because it is in my experience like I don't see it that often just from our generation you right. know but like my wife my wife was like that like yeah. my father in law never ever ever laid a hand on her like if she's got good values yeah and the mother too yeah nobody wow like your cool. mom would kind of give her a scare once in a while but never like they would yeah. never do anything but I mean like the, you know like the ones that just. Like they just don't reprimand their kids or anything yeah. like that. That shit is crazy to me. Like, like oh, you know, they gotta be free. They gotta be like these kids are talking back to them. Like they have a conversation. They tell them, oh, well, this is how you made me feel. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, you know, <laughs> she's seven. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, like you, I don't know if that's gonna have the desired effect. You think? Right. Like you know what I mean. It's like okay. Like it's one thing. Like I don't mind my kid voicing. You know, I want my kid to have a voice, but at the end of the day, like, you're not going to sit here and combat me and tell me, oh, well, you know, because then they get manipulative mm-hmm. and they say things like, like, you telling them to go to, to the, um, to take a shower or something. It's like, oh, well, mom, you said I could do anything I want. And right now, I just don't feel like you're respecting my, <laughs> you know, like, what? Bro, so uh, is me being a stepdad. That for you know, I was I was raised where if you acted up, you know, you get a smack. Yeah. So that's not an option as a step. It's not. So it's kind of <laughs> interesting because it, I it forces me to break the way that I that my way of thinking. Right. It's like you have to come up with a better way because right. there's no other option. Yeah. So I, I mean I appreciate that. Like to a point, I kind of feel like there really there is another way. Yeah. Like you can talk to the kid while still demanding respect right. and still getting the respect you demand and still teaching the kid right from wrong. Yeah. It's but it's hard to, you know, if what the way we were raised it's hard to break out of that. Yeah. But see, that's see here's the thing with me though. Like I yoke your ass up though. Like, you know what I mean? Cuz mm-hmm. it's like if you get disrespectful, I like I tell people quick like if your kid is disrespectful, keep your kid away from me. Mm-hmm. 
Because <laughs> I'm not, you know what I mean? Like, I'll put up with it a little bit, but, like, I'll demand respect from your kid. Like, I'll make your kid sit down. Like, I won't hit them. Mm-hmm. But it's going to be ways, like, without hitting, like you said, without hitting them. Like, but my kid, no, I'm slapping the shit out of you. Like, I don't got time for this. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Because it's different and it's, take, it's taxing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, with my godson, I do this. Like, I have to, you know what I mean? I had to break him out of some habits. Mm-hmm. And one time, you know, he, he he was acting up, being disrespectful to his moms and shit. I made him sit down because they like, oh, well, he ain't going to do it. Just let him go. No. We will sit here or you either going to apologize or you're going you just going to stay here. Mm-hmm. He fell asleep. He didn't apologize, but he didn't get his way either. You yeah, know well, I mean? they're only going to get away with what you allow them to get right. away with. And that's not, you know, that's just things that I just won't accept. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. And um, even like with my dog, because mm-hmm. like with my dog, like I could sit there, like his cage is in my room and his bed is in my room. Now I could say, go to your cage. He goes to his cage. This is way off topic, but I'm actually, yeah, I'm, I know, interested. But I'm this, interested to keep going. But if I tell him, go to his bed, he goes to his bed. Now. It's different inclinations. Like, if I just tell him he know I'm just not as serious, mm-hmm. he'll go, and then he'll come back. And then, like, I'll hear him coming, like, best I'll fucking playing with me. Then he'll, <laughs> yeah. he'll go back, you know what I mean? Or he'll sit there, he'll be looking at me. I'm like, what I tell you to do? And he go, you know what I mean? He, no, they know what you're saying, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, dogs, people don't give dogs enough credit for intelligence. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they think dogs are so, those might be smarter than us because at least we don't know what the fuck they talking about, mm. but they know what the fuck we talking about. Well, they're, so def- was, <laughs> they're definitely better than us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? So, you know, and they love you regardless. Like, yeah. But, um, nah, it's, nah, let's get back on topic. Like, how the fuck? We get... <laughs> you know, why, don't we, why don't we put a pin in it? Until yeah, next yeah, time? let's do that. Let's do that. Because you and I both we, got work in the we, morning. Yeah, what time is it? It's almost nine. Yeah, I got to get to the house. I got my son with me this week, so I'm excited right. about that, man. I'm good, man. I'm yeah. Listen, I appreciate you coming over here, especially talking about this kind of shit. Sometimes it's a little oh, hairy. No, nah, I, 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 listen, man, we could talk about it any time. I wish we actually had more people. Like maybe we should do that one day. Like we, we should do get, that. Get more, actually, different races. Like yo, let me ask you something. To, if somebody that I started following my Instagram because of the episode you were on, uh-huh. the main man Adonis. Oh, that's my if, boy, Rasad. Bro, he yeah. seems like a, like a good dude, man. Oh, I started following him back. He's, he is. He seems like a good, he is. a good, a good friend to have. Seems like a nice guy. Definitely. Is, shout man. out to him if he's listening. Yeah, shout out to Rashad. Yo, but, follow him. Main man. <laughs> I don't know his name. <laughs> I don't know the, the main way. man Adonis, but it's spelled son, like main son, like hair, yeah, like the um, like um, how what's the name we saying um, like a lion's mane. Lobo, the main man. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, shout out to him. Yeah. If All you're right. listening, but, you got a shout out. <laughs> yeah. Like I was saying though, man, I appreciate you coming here. You know, I, I wanted this is kind of like like I said, a touchy subject, so I wanted someone that I know that I I trust, like we we understand each other but coming right. from a good place, you know? Right. Yeah, no, I get it. And um I appreciate you having me. I feel like, you know, I mean it's probably there's other things we could have touched on, but we'll get to it. You know how we do. We just We'll get to it, man. Yeah, we we be winging it. So like, yeah. like, <laughs> Sorry, we start talking about the dogs yeah, and everything. Yeah. All right. Well, like I said, thank you, sir. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me, man. Of course. Thanks for the sangria and the hospitality. My pleasure, man. Last time you let me in your house, now you're in mine. Got to take yeah. care of you. Yeah. yeah. So, and to anybody listening, thank you for listening. We appreciate all you guys. Definitely. It's pretty much like 95% men. So, it's all you guys. We love you. And to the ladies, we love you, too. Yeah, we got to get more women. Women. get got, I'm going to put it out there. I, I got to get some women to follow. We got women. We just had women on last episode. Yeah, fe- I, haven't, female I, haven't been, barbers. I haven't I haven't been able to oh, female barbers. Yeah, my friend Brianna, girl I grew up with, she opened a barber shop for men. Really, yeah. I had a woman cut my hair one time in Virginia, and it wasn't bad. It wasn't yeah. bad. It was at a lemon tree. <laughs> nah. Listen, bro, I just took my son to get his hair cut on Saturday, and I fucked it all up. So it don't don't matter what sex you are. Yeah, you, you nah, can still you, be you, shitty you, as a you, guy. You, you, actually, no. Shout out to Lady J from Jersey City. She's actually an awesome barber. She did my hair right before I moved, and she hooked it up. Yeah. Matter of fact, right before I went to Philly. Lady she, J? Lady J. Shout yes. out to Lady J. Shout out to Lady J. She's a, she's a very good barber. So there are there are good. They're definitely out there. Yeah, Shout out definitely. to Breon and the Dapper Men's Den. Thanks again for coming on, guys. All yeah. right. So... He has always, guys, you know where to Shout find Shout out to the Sangria. Shout out to Sangria. Maria Lola Sangria. I hope that's an L. 
It's in cursive. I can't tell. It's French, but it's fucking good, man. It is good. So, yeah, as always, you know where to find it's us on Instagram, Twitter. From France, but... <laughs> yeah. At a pot amongst men. You can email us with any questions or comments or suggestions you got at a pot amongst men at gmail.com. And uh, you know where to get the podcast, you're already listening, but just in case, it's on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, YouTube, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, everywhere you get your podcast, oh, you yeah, will find oh, it. You, you don't blow up. <laughs> so yeah, check no. you out. <laughs> <laughs> One of these days. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's it. So thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you next week. All right. Peace.